So welcome everyone. It's a great uh, pleasure to have Professor Yosef Vitiski with us today. He's a well-known figure and most of us uh, have learned subject uh, reading his works. Well known for the home fly CT polynomial, uh, scan theory and also famous for his uh, every semester conference plots in Washington. So I'm sure many of us would have attended that. So uh, today Professor Vitiski is going to talk about introduction on Introduction to Kavanaugh homology. So over to you, Professor. Thank you. So my talk today is very introductory. In fact, I am giving two talks, as you know, today about introduction to Kavanaugh homology, tomorrow about from Fox coloring to young Baxter homology. And just to have perspective, the big goal, which is not achieved yet, so maybe some young people will do, is to connect Kavanaugh homology with young Baxter homology. So kind of my talks are explaining each topic independently. And the goal is that Hovanov homology may be very useful in statistical physics, even in a more elementary way than Witten is conjecturing this. So anyway, today will be very elementary introduction. So it's great pleasure to talk at ICTS. I was in Mohali, I think already six years ago. It was a great visit and I hope I will go to India in two years when this conference will be in person. And introduction to Hovanov homology. So first, still for introduction, my university is in Washington and you see GW in the central line and then there's White House to the left, very close like, that, like five minutes walk from the corner of university. And then if you go the other direction, there's famous Watergate, famous for various reason, Watergate affair. And in fact, it is on the river. Here, it is Potomac River and this big hotel on the river. And then you can go to GW. Okay. So as I said, I will talk about Hovanov homology and I will use approach of Vero. I will tell about this later. And I will end with very easy, nice tool, kind of hidden in Hovanov work, but explicitly wrote in Oleg Vero paper, long exact sequence of homology. Already this long exact sequence have plenty of very nice applications. I will show, or at least discuss one of them. From long exact sequence, as some of you know, we go to spectral sequences but long exact sequence is already a very good tool. So, as I said, this is my first lecture and I once wrote a long paper which was, was supposed to be chapter of my big book. This is this first uh, study material. Then I listed four papers which are related with Hovanov homology, which mostly I wrote with my students or postdocs Maybe I should concentrate for a moment on this, this paper by Sujoy, Maritania, Xiao, and Yopi, because this is what I, maybe you, you, maybe you remember from Ria talk that we organize every December for students, what we call, for my PhD student, we organize what we call Matathon. We take some research project and try to progress this in one, two weeks. And then we work on this longer. And it was the second one when we were looking for torsion in Hovano homology. And this was this one example when just long exact sequence of homology gave very nice new results. So we published this in experimental mathematics. Okay, let's go further. So just short introduction. I assume you know already what is Kaufman bracket. Kaufman gave talk with generalizing even Kaufman bracket. And it was mentioned Kaufman bracket relation in Ria talk. So this was big revolution in 1984. Not totally used to be kind of on the margin of algebraic topology. After John's discovery in May of 1984, it became mainstream. John's noticed immediate connection to statistical physics. And when Kaufman noticed how one can define, or he constructed his Kaufman bracket and soon noticed that is 
variant of John's polynomial, but variant of John's polynomial, which allows many interesting things. One was almost essential classification of alternating links. So we call the state conjectures. It was solved. In particular, when you have alternating links, you can immediately see that you cannot be reduced further unless there are some nugatory crossing. So it was a great theorem. And really, Kaufman bracket is the base for Hovanov homology, kind of Euler characteristic of this Hovanov homology. Still, it is better to have a Kaufman bracket approach than original Jones. So I always draw because especially in Poland. I am from Poland, so there was famous singer and his one song was saying, written in 1995, was saying that probably nothing will happen till the end of 20th century. So I always joke that no, Hovanov homology was just then. So Hovanov did PhD in 1997 in Yale and already in vacation, at vacations, after he did PhD, he has this great idea of categorifying John's polynomial or Kaufman bracket, meaning finding chain complexes with homology such that Euler characteristic was Hovanov homology. So, and this very rich structure and has a lot of information. So my today's talk is not about survey like Ria talked before, but it's just introduction. So it's more or less what I was saying that it was very good. It detects a lot of knots. And my presentation is about Oleg Viro. So just not to read what is written here, but comment. So Hovanov homology, his idea in 97. He wrote and submitted to journal already in 98. He put, and he was talking about, he put preprint in 99 and finally it was published in Duke in 2000. But people were hearing talks or at least hearing news about this like me. It looked complicated, but few people, and especially it was Barnatan and Viro, decided to really understand what Hovanov homology is. Otherwise, his initial drafts or talks look a little like manipulation of gradings of Kaufman bracket and it was difficult to see what is the essence. So this, in the year 2002, early uh, 2002, it was Barnatan on one hand and Oleg Viro on the other hand, who gave elementary approaches, especially Oleg Viro, elementary approaches to Hovanov homology. So I was lucky to be in Gdańsk in Poland in 2002 when Oleg Viro gave one of these introductory talks. And it was enlightenment. After, after Viro talk, I understood this pretty well. And in fact, already that December 2002, I was thinking that it may be generalized to other scale models, not only S3, but scale, Kaufman bracket scale module in other three manifolds. I will not talk about this today, but this was natural thing, especially if you watch carefully the talk, you can see that if you have surface and you project, you have surface cross interval and you project your, your link to the, to the surface, what I will tell today following Vero, you can think how to generalize this to surface cross interval. Other generalization to other three manifolds like lens spaces is difficult. So, and only partially done. So yes, I will follow Oleg Viro, more or less his talk in Gdańsk in 2002. So first, let's remind you just very shortly Kaufman bracket. And the main reason really for this is that, that we use slightly different version, different normalization of Kaufman bracket. For us, for trivial diagram of n components, it is minus a square minus a to minus two to power n, meaning that trivial knot has already this coefficient with one. What is coefficient? What is really one? One is empty link. So we have to put empty link and have this, as we call, unreduced Kaufman polynomial. So, you can work with Hovanov homology as well with reduced Kaufman polynomial, standard one, but it is different story. And as Hovanov show, it depends on base point on one component. It depends on choice of base point. When in this version, it is just invariant under the Meistermoves. However, in this version, 
using Kaufmann bracket, not John's polynomial, it's invariant on the second and third Rademeister move. And in the first Rademeister move, like with Kaufmann bracket, it is giving a shift. Anyway, on this picture is only, I recall Kaufmann bracket relation and I give initial condition. And just on the bottom, what I show is, remind is that this differs from standard Kaufmann bracket like this, just by multiplying by one factor. People who never Kauf started Kaufmann bracket will wonder why we choose so strange variable. This is forced by second Rademeister move. Otherwise, Kaufmann from the beginning in 85 was trying here, instead of not a minus one, but he was just putting some variable b. And instead of this minus a square minus a minus two, he was put some variable d. And for diagram, it was producing three variable polynomial. But, but if you apply second Rademeister move, you are forced to substitute. Third Rademeister move follows automatically. Okay? Now, in categorification, we use state sum for the Kaufmann bracket. So now, small terminology. When we have crossing, we can make smoothing, like here horizontally. We call this A smoothing because maybe I should go back. Variable A was used in this smoothing. And B, historically, now maybe you should call this A inverse marker vertically when we have. So there are two choices. Each choice leads to smoothing of the diagram. So remember, this will be just, just the function for every crossing we know whether we make A smoothing or B smoothing. Because S3 is oriented, we know which one is which. When you have diagram, we know which is this and which is which. Of course, maybe we rotate diagram, but still we know which is which. So this is Kaufman state. And maybe the next slide will show this, but when we compute Kaufman bracket, we know we resolve crossing A times first one and B times the second one. So we can use resolve every crossing and we get the state sum. For this bracket, this unreduced, the state sum has this shape. Nothing mysterious. We, we, for A, we take A smoothing, for B, or A inverse, we take this smoothing, so it is A to this power, and after smoothing all crossing according to the state, we have some number of trivial component. DS is, is the diagram obtained by smoothing every crossing according to state S. So then we know that this should be associated to trivial diagram. So this is state sum, Kaufmann state sum for unreduced Kaufmann bracket. So one can try to use this to define homology, but when, when Vila was discussing this, he was saying this will be difficult because we have to, we have still here polynomial. You can of course say that we associate this polynomial immediately and make some structure. This is really how Barnathan was doing this. But Vila decided to make it more naively, break this monomial, polynomial into two things. A square, we call the circle, so circle has a whole polynomial. Uh, then, then one circle we have a square, second circle a minus two, we have called them one negative circle, one positive circle. And this will be enhanced Kaufmann state. So this is on next transparency. So as I said, for every circle of DS, meaning that we have diagram, we smooth every crossing, we have collection of circles. Now for every circle, we put either plus or minus, having in memory, that if it was plus, we put a squared, and if it is minus, we pay, put a to minus two. Vero, to, to have it kind of very visualizing, he said that we have this Kaufmann state initially, and then we enhance this, so we have this additional function. So Vero is putting capital S when small s is enhanced. Now it has more information. And this allows us, we have more states, and we have this more states because we wanted to break our polynomial into monomial. So our state sum formula now has this form. We sum over all enhanced states and we have just sign, sign is the same as before, coming from components. And, and this polynomial is coming, first part is coming. As I said, the signature is the number of positive of A markers minus number of B markers. And the second part is coming from signs of circles. So finally, this formula was for 
wieder Base for Hovanov homology. His idea was that really in Hovanov homology, this element S will form bases, this enhanced Kaufman state with the base of chain groups in chain complexes defining Hovanov homology. So everything here is just notation. But we should remember we have Kaufman state and enhanced Kaufman state. We'll not use even this formula very much later, except remembering that this value, signature of S plus twice tau of S, will be important because it will be incorporated to degree in Hovanov homology. And because of this, after some manipulation, we can see that Hovanov homology has Euler characteristic equal exactly this polynomial. So now, finally, we can define Hovanov homology. So maybe, maybe I should say a few words. I didn't put slide here. I assume that you know what is homology. But generally, you need chain complex. So you need groups and bubs between groups. And you divide such that this bundle operation composed with itself are giving 0. And we divide kernel by image. For Hovanov homology, we have second grading. But we can keep second grading fixed. And this will give chain complex. I will explain this later, just to remind you that better to know what is chain complex and homology coming from chain complex. OK, so now, as a promise, slowly we define chain groups first. So we have our enhanced Kaufman states, and we stratify them by two degrees. Kind of, we call this homological degree and quantum degree, but it's not important. In fact, degree B corresponds to degree of Kaufman bracket as you can see here. So A is just the signature number of positive markers minus number of negative markers, when B is this potential degree of Kaufman bracket. Remember, this was degree of power of A in the state sum formula. So this stratification. And this is, this is basis of our chain group. So chain groups are formal element of chain group are formal linear combination of this enhanced Kaufman states. Very naively. We have Kaufman states and we have this. Now we need, of course, bundle operation. So what I was mentioning, to have homology, we'll be dividing kernels but images, so we need this map. So this map already is coding a lot of information because it's saying that index A is going to index A minus 2 and B is, B is fixed. It means that for every fixed B, we have chain complex and we have homology for every B. So if B is fixed, it is standard homology. So now we have to define more precisely this bundle operation. So one observation is that if you have some state with marker A and we change this to marker B, then A goes down by two. And it has no influence on on B. I mean, it may have influence because we have to put some numbers, but we will not change B here. So A is going to A minus 2. This will be formalized later, what it means. But generally, we look for a formula like here. Again, Vero was stressing in old function way, we say when two states are neighbors, when are incident one to another. S is our original state in SAB. And in the image, we should be in A minus 2B. So it is just sum of S over S prime, some coefficient, and some sign, as it's usually in chain complex. And in this case, it will be very nice. This coefficient will be only 0 or 1, like in very old fashioned homology, when we see when two cells are neighbors. So now I will explain this. And this one should be very careful because essentially this will be definition of Hovanov homology. More difficult part would be that it is invariant under second and third Rademeister move, which I will not do. But for definition, this will be enough. So this map is the crucial thing. So as I said, this, is, this coefficient is only 1 or 0. Now we can describe when it is 1. The sign a little later. So Vero was stressing, if you don't like sign, just work modulo 2 
if you work modulo two, then will be done. So first condition is what I was mentioning, not only that, that signature going down by two, but really it is related with only one crossing. So our markers in Kaufman state, Kaufman state markers for every crossing is unchanged except one crossing when we change A to B. In such a way, signature is going down by two. Now we should say what happened with signs. So we know that B should stay. If B stays and sigma go down by two, it means that tau, meaning the number of positive circles minus number of negative circles, should go up by one, which means that we have one additional positive circle or maybe one less negative circle. We should stress that we if we change in at one crossing marker A to marker B, it's easy to notice that the number of components is going up or down. It's kind of important. So we know that this number has to go up by one. Now the only addition condition, except this one which follows from our grading, is that if circles are not involved in the crossing, so there's no regluing, no, no fusion or splitting or something like this, then we keep the sign of the circle. So this is, will be complete up to sign definitions, but let's go back. So we have all ingredients of definition. We now know when it is zero or one. Sign will be explained in a moment. And otherwise it's very important that index A is going down by two and index B is staying. Okay, so now what about sign? If you remember from basic algebraic topology, we have face maps and the sign depend on which, for sign in simplicial homology, usually you have to order vertex some simplicial complex and then the sign depend which vertex we operate in. Here is very similar. To have definition, it does not depend on this, but to have definition, we have to order crossings of the diagrams. And this sign will depend on this ordering. So, there are various choices. In fact, I choose slightly non-standard choice, but they're all equivalent as it's not difficult to show. So for me, this TSS prime, remember SSS prime differs only at one vertex, let's say V. So it is the number of crossings with label A in Kaufman state, S, smaller than crossing V in the chosen ordering. It looks like artificially, but a standard method of giving signs when you like to have chain complex. So if you apply your bundle operation twice, you like to have zero. And maybe in older times, I will say that's always happened. Whatever you choose for sign doesn't matter, but it's not true. If you change sign in more kind of more global manner as discovered by Oshbach and Zabo, you can have another version of Hovanov homology called odd Hovanov homology. The beginning till this moment is the same as I did now but then you manipulate very smart way with sign and you have odd Hovanov homology. It's more complicated, not that much. Anyway, we are done with, Hov with definition of Hovanov homology. So, so Hovanov homology as it should be is defined by kernel divided by image. This is the reason I call this Hovanov homology because indices of the bundle operation are going down. In Hovanov original definition, he chose different indexes because he was working with John's polynomial and you may know that you have to invert T in John's polynomial is A to minus four in Kaufman bracket. So the, the direction has changed. So for him, usually he called this cohomology. However, it's not a big difference. And I will, I will address this in a moment. Anyway, we are done with definition of Hovanov homology. We just construct enhanced Kaufman states and use them as basis of chain complexes and bundle operation in a sense is very natural. And now if you like, you can think about case of surface cross interval and try to repeat similar construction. So now just, I was telling that the sign should be chosen that tau is going up. In fact, one can list all situation when this possible. So here I list all situation, of, of course, except this on the bottom when I wrote zero, when S and S prime are neighbors. So how to understand this picture? First of all, we have this crossing V. So crossing is always V. 
when in S the molecule is A molecules and in B we have B molecule. So this is everywhere. Now we have our smoothing along A molecule, this blue but solid. And now there are possible uh, connection. This is in S in, in, on the plane or in S2 projection. So only this connection is possible. All, all on the light side this connection. In one case we started with two components, in other case we start with one component. On the surface cross interval there's more choices. This is why it is slightly more difficult or more difficult. Anyway, let's analyze the first situation. So we have chosen here that we start with two components involved in the crossing. And these two components has, can have values signs. So I, here I consider the case that both of them are minus and minus. After regluing this from two components, I have one component. But we know that tau should go up. So will go up by losing one minus. So here we have to have minus minus is giving minus. Now another possibility was that the signs in enhanced state was plus or minus. Then again we have to lose minus and then it's only plus. Similarly here, maybe one should mention this important that here there are two different uh, enhanced Kaufman state going to the same Kaufman state in the image. This I wrote, of course this should not be here, I wrote just that it's impossible. If I have here plus and plus, you cannot produce three pluses, so I just wrote this is zero, but it's just nothing. Now here we will consider a situation when we started with one component involved in the crossing. So it is broken to two components after changing A markers to B marker. And again, what are the possibilities? If here and how stat had plus, because tau have to go up by one, I have plus plus. If it was minus, it can either go to plus minus or minus plus. Again, important that minus can, can have two choices, which later will be. And this is it. So when you do it practically, try to compute Havanov homology, say for Trefoil, because by hand it's possible for Trefoil or maybe, or maybe Hopfling for only simple knots or links, then you should analyze all these possible situations and see when bundle operation is non-trivial. With minus, it can either go to plus minus. What I wrote, minus plus or plus minus. Minus can go plus minus or minus plus, yeah. There are two possibilities because we know that tau should go up. So here it go up by, by having additional plus. I hope I didn't make any mistake here, but yes. So, so this is a list of all neighbors or incident vertices in our sum. So let's go back to sum now. This is showing where it is possible, when it is possible that this coefficient is equal to one. We listed all cases. So this is definition and maybe just one more thing. State that one of the condition which maybe we didn't pay much attention was that not only this tau would go up, but every circle which is not involved in the crossing is keeping sign, so we don't have to draw it. All circles which are not drawn here, some outside of this picture, key are keeping sign when we go from S to S prime. Okay. So now kind of at least be slightly more sophisticated. So when we when we combine two circles together, so let's go back, when we combine two circles together, we can think about this operation as multiplication. From two, we have one. Two minuses are giving one minus. Plus minus is giving plus, strangely. Minus plus is giving plus. When we break crossing, when we split, it's like of one is going to two. Plus is going to plus plus, minus is going to plus minus, minus is going to minus plus. So you can kind of write that this kind of algebraic nice algebraic structure, this algebraic structure. So maybe I, I skip too quickly that we can think that we have multiplication when we connect to circles and we have commultiplication when we break circles. For the moment, very naively. This is the table, kind of table of multiplication. We'll not like this and Vero didn't like this because kind of minus minus go to minus and minus plus to go to, to plus and plus minus go to plus. It should be kind of the opposite. This zero, we should think that is only on the level of basis on this plus is minus, it is only partial uh, multiplication. This zero has no meaning. It only means that 
that we go outside of our, of our symbols. Anyway, and for the multiplication, when we look at the picture, plus is going to plus plus, and minus is going to plus minus plus minus plus, when we like to have formal. So, Vilo didn't like this, and his solution was the following. When he, so he gave, was giving the stocks, he put paper on Alhaif in 2002. Then he finally published paper in Fundamenta, but then he didn't like this, and he switched the role of plus and minus which I hate because I use so much to this his old notation. So I'm not doing this. So I was thinking what to do to make more sense of this table. And this is of course only for fun, but I found the following solution. When we have minus, we rotate it slightly, but rotated minus when it's vertical is really one. And when we have plus, we rotate it less on the 90 degree rotate and we have X. So our table, which before it looked like nonsense, now it looks very nice. Because really one times one should be one, one times x should be x, x times one is again x, and x times x, we go outside of one and x, but it should be zero. So that we have to extend this, but it looks already like polynomials. So, oh, what happened? Oh, yes. Uh, no, when I lost the table. Anyway, should be, oh yeah, commultiplication is written above. And commultiplication changed to very nice commultiplication, bundle of x, uh, commultiplication of one is x1 plus one x, and bundle x is x, x. And then we can recognize this table as multiplication in, when we take ring of polynomials of x, and necessarily divide it by x squared, meaning x squared is zero. And this is really the object which Hovanov is using as his basic thing, it has property which we call Frobenius algebra. We don't have to know what are the properties. However, it is important that because this has this property, we have chain complex. We didn't, didn't check that our, what we constructed, chains and bundle operations are chain complex, that composition is zero. This is because this is Frobenius algebra, but we don't have to, to have this. We can use different Frobenius algebra and there are not that great generalization for it. There are some, I hope. Anyway, this multiplication table when you use one and x, and more or less is the one used by Hovanov and Alnata. Now, as I said, of course, this will, very, will be very useful. Our Hovanov homology is invariant under the Meister move, moves. So the theorem of Hovanov is saying that it's invariant. However, in version of Hovanov, it was invariant under all the Meister move. Here we have unoriented version, so it behaves like Kaufmann bracket. Just recall, Kaufmann bracket is invariant on the second and third Rademeister move, but on the first Rademeister move it is shifted by power minus a to third power or minus a to minus third. So very controllable shift. And here will be the similar situation. This homology is preserved by second and third Rademeister move, and it is shifted by the first Rademeister move. I wrote here what is the shift. The shift on the coordinate B is exactly the shift of Kaufmann bracket. The shift of the first one is just that positive twist, positive first rather Meister move is adding one positive crossing. So we have to kind of take into account that we have one more crossing. Similarly for negative, we have one more negative crossing. So maybe more smarter is to say that really is invariant of frame links. Because when you have frame links, the second and third rather Meister move, but first rather Meister move is really changing of framing. Nobody was telling that we change framing, you should keep your polynomial. But it's very nice that this change, framing change is changing this in controllable way, like shifting homology or multiplying by a to third power. Anyway, we know this almost changed by all other master move, it is invariant of framings. But when you try to define, try to generalize Hovanov homology, to other three-dimensional manifolds, then you should think that you categorize Kaufman bracket screen module like Leah was defining. Then framing is very important. You cannot even really well define Kaufman bracket scale module without framing in three manifolds in general. You can do for surface cross interval, but not in general. Anyway, so kind of this version sometimes we call frame Hovanov homology to distinguish from version given by Hovanov and Bernatan, but they're equivalent. Okay, now example. So for trefoil, but in Vila notation, so 
trefoil already, and this is really why it is nice, because trefoil already showed that there is torsion in Hovan of homology. So I can say again personally, when in this December of, of uh, whatever, 2002, with Marta Aceda and Adam Shikora, we are trying to think about Hovan of homology and generalizing to other three manifolds, especially with Malta, we are trying to compute this for trefoil by hand. And to our surprise, we are getting this Z2 and this long calculation. If you do just for definition, it will be rather long calculation. And I didn't believe this. I was not, I should say, listening to talks by Alexander Shumakovich, who already knew about this, more about him later. But I was very surprised and remember, the, finally, we decided that Malta called Alexander, is it possible that you have torsion here? And he said, obviously, you have torsion. Torsion should be for every alternating link. He was already proving this then in 2003, I think. So yes, this is for, for, this is for trefoil knot. And maybe here is the same when we change. So maybe I should say just one word. That is no big deal. We can go from our notation, which is here, A, B, to Hovanov or Barnatad notation, and there's just this change of variable. What is important is that for Hovanov approach, you have to have oriented diagram. So we take an orientation of the diagram, this arrow is saying an orientation, and we just have to have this right of the diagram, meaning the sum over all crossings of sign of the diagram. And this is kind of allowing us, like in the standard case of Kaufman bracket, this is allowing us to, to translate Hovanov homology from this frame version, AB, to Hovanov Balnatan version, IJ. In fact, I should say that Hovanov as well changed, can change his notation from the first paper to other papers. But when you look at tables in not atlas, they're using this notation, I and J. So, Maybe we should not look here for pattern, except that there's this Z2, of course, now in different position because we, we, we switch variables. Okay, let's go further. So for Hopfling, for, and I'm showing Hopfling calculations relatively easy, Hopfling still has no torsion. As we will see later, maybe this more or less the only link which has no torsion in Hovanov homology, of course, except trivial and combinations. So there's Hopfling in, so here you have one by one, uh, Vero notation and Barnatan Hovanov notation. So, so here they look almost the same except grading because this universal coefficient theorem and Hovanov homology is related to standard like homology, cohomology. So there's shift of Z2, etc. Anyway, here they look almost the same except shift. Okay. So now, what is this tool? Long exact sequence. So we know long exact sequence is something which is related homology of values of values uh, topological spaces but here it ref it relates values link diagrams so here i should explain because i was unable to draw nice pictures so d is our diagram and we have specific crossing v this is b smoothing and this means a smoothing so this homologies are related by long exact sequence this is not difficult to prove. I said Vero was showing this in his short talk and it was very exciting that it was so easy. Why? I will not dwell much to details, but you can recover when you notice that when you have crossing, then at this crossing, you have to have either B smoothing or A smoothing, which means that chain groups are divided into groups with B smoothing and groups with A smoothing. And then what will be, and then we have this embedding. We have B smoothing here, put B marker. If we have A smoothing, we have put A marker. And this is giving map on the level of chain complexes. How we go, bundle map usually is difficult from A to B. No, here it is just that we go from A smoothing to B smoothing. Of course, here there is no already crossing. We, we did already the smoothing. So it is kind of having in memory that we had here A smoothing and we changed from A smoothing to B smoothing and it's giving connecting map. In fact, in most of the language, it is built from the cone. So chain complex of the diagram is the con over B smoothing and A smoothing. But this is very, very useful tool. There's a lot of applications and I will mention one of them. So first of all, we can use, sorry, we can use a special case of this. So of course, if in one place we have zero, then two other things are isomorphism, monomorphism. 
Okay, so maybe just slide before, I was saying that we have long exact sequence of homology and probably this slide you just did see. Did you, I think you did. Okay, so this has many applications. It is connecting diagram with the diagram when we make B smoothing and A smoothing. So it's very useful, especially useful when DB is very small. So if DB is zero, if both of them are zero, we have isomorphism. And we can use this in particular to many things, but in particular to compute uh, Havanov homology of torus link. Why this is the case? Because imagine this, this link twists on two strings, torus links of type two, two strings and n twists. And then when we make B smoothing, vertical smoothing, it became trivial not. For this homology is there's no, no enhanced state except two trivial one. So mostly this is zero. So then using induction with some work, we can find that Havana homology of torus not is of this shape. It has a lot of two torsions and z torsions. And if you look at this and this, it is on two diagonals. And I will show in a moment big examples. But historically, this is the first family of knots for which Hovanov computed homology. He did it by hand in his first paper. He got this nice result. Then I noticed that really this homology is related to Hoshil homology for which in the specific algebra, z of x divided by x squared was already a long time ago computed by Hoshil himself in 1945. So it was another proof. But you can as well use long exact sequence of homology and naively by induction compute this. So we got, for example, for big torus knot of type 211, homology is like this. So homology is like this. And you see that homology is on two diagonals and there's Z2 on the upper diagonal. In fact, this was proved by Le very early, very, in very nice tricky way, later leading to spectral sequence. She was showing that for alternating links always this is on two diagonals and diagonal is on the upper, it is on the lower in different convention, but on the upper level. And, but this can be proven as well just by using long exact sequence of homology. So it has very nice applications. So let me show this in, yeah, for the link, for the link there's small difference. All the, from the beginning is exactly the same because by induction, just it ends with ZZ, not Z to Z, like in Hopfling. So just to remind you here was at the very end on the left bottom was ZZ2 and here is ZZ. This is the only difference and proof is by induction. Okay, so for torus links we can compute this. So now about torsion. As you already did see from this example to end torus knot, there's plenty of Z2 torsion. And this, as I said, was observed by Shumakovich and formulated as conjecture that except Hopfling, which I showed there's no torsion, so let's look at conjecture, except the tolls, except hopflings or everything you can make from hopfling and trivial links, disjoint unions, connected sum, very limited number. If you think about not, it's only trivial not and hopfling, and hopfling is not a not, so only trivial not. So hopfling. So this has always Z2 torsion. So with Malta Aceda, we proved it's partially for something called adequate links, but still otherwise it is open question. Of course, Alexander Shumakovich verified this for many links, in particular for links up to 16 crossings, but still open conjecture. So now I was mentioning that Alexander was making a lot of experimental data. So Alexander Shumakovich wrote nice program, Koho, and this is the main pro the other program, but he, he started tabulating knots according to Havanov homology. So up to 14 crossings, there was only Z2 torsion. Then he found uh, knots of 15 and 16 crossings, which have z fold torsion, just z fold. The simplest of them was torus knot of type fold five. And as I, as I copied here from his paper, there's 38 with 15 crossing and 129 of 16 crossing, but there was no other torsion. And in fact, in the very, very first version, Alexander thought that that, that will be no, no other torsion than especially there will be no odd torsion. He didn't expect that will be no Z8, but there will be no odd torsion. So this conjecture was open till stronger computer program were written. So now I did finish with, I should say, with 
Wille approach to Hovanov homology, we gave definition, formal definition with all details. Now I will say a little about our work with students and, and with Malta, which was postdoc, about, about torsion in Hovanov homology. Just overview, especially there are some very new results. So this was the status when Alexander started this. Then it was Balnatan who, I, I don't see his name here, so Stras Balnatan, who found torsion in, who computed T5-6 and T7-8. And even one of his papers about torsion is not as proven, I computed Hovanov homology of T, I don't remember, T7-9 or something like this, and I am happy. Because it was big effort. So with T5-6, he found Z3 and Z5 torsion, and with T7-8, he found additionally seven torsion. This was essentially the limit of his program without working hard. But you see already many crossings. In fact, when you have a random knot, already 35 crossings is the limit. But for tolls, lot, tolls knots and links, the program is better. Especially it was shown by Lucas Luolk, who, who did specifically T89, tolls knot of T89, and he found eight tolls in there. So it was new tolls from this. In fact, after this, we conjecture with, with Radmila Sazdanovic that, that maybe tolls knots of type n, n plus one will have n torsion. This is still open conjecture, verified only for T910 and very recently and with big effort. Not full, com, homo, hova, not full Hovanov homology for 910 is computed, but enough to see that it has nine torsion. Okay, so he found eight torsion. Then, as I said, with, with, with my students and former student and postdoc, we found using just long exact sequence of homology and some tricks, nice tricks, we found uh, families of knots, not only one knot, specific from table by computer, but we found infinite families of prime knots and links with Z3, Z5, and Z7 torsion in Hovanov homology. So, so this, is, this was new, published in experimental mathematics. Then with even torsion, we found even more. We found that there are four blades with very big power of two torsion. It's still open whether you have infinite, but up to 23, you have, so it is like three millions or something like this, four millions, then, then we have Z2S and it has this torsion. Conjecture that even four blades contain big even torsion. And then Sujoy, who was main part, one of important members of our Mataton, of our team, found using very nice kind of experimental things, torsion 9, 25, 27, and 81. And recently he found arbitrary large torsion. We should remember arbitrary launch not, doesn't mean that they found Z11. No, Z11 is still open. They found any power of three, any power of five, and any power of seven. So still any power of two is open on up 23, and Z11 is open. We suspect that if you take tolls not of type 11 to 12, it will have 11 torsion. So this is interesting and, and Sujoy Mukheri's tools are, are more sophisticated now, but still the trick with long exact sequence and kind of twisting is part of this. So thank you. And as you know, tomorrow I have another talk about Young Baxter homology. Thank you. Questions now. Thank you, Professor Spisky. Are there any questions? So professor, in one of you, I have one question. Okay, sure. Question here. So okay, I will read out for you. Mm -hmm. So can you comment on Kavanaugh homology of Rubinstein coloring invariant? Once more of Rubinstein's coloring invariant. I have no clue what is Rubinstein coloring invariant, but so this is a question from Professor Elam Dadi. And which Rubinstein? Is it the one from incompressible surfaces or from Polish oh, one? The topological quantiles uh, who has... Oh, Richard Rubinstein. No, I... Because I don't know answer to this question because I didn't read his paper. I can tell you personal stories. 
So he was my professor in Poland, in Warsaw, in 76, 77. He was one of the pioneers of algebraic topology in Poland. And then he was active in solidarity in democracy movement in Poland. And he was arrested in martial law. And then they allow him, they promise him to release him from prison if he emigrate. So he emigrated to Sweden. He's in Uppsala, probably his paper is in, in Uppsala. And for many years, he was not active researcher and he came back with, with this quandle, topological quandles. But I don't know what is still quandle coloring as this, so I say I don't know. Any so more? it's Richard Rubinstein. More questions? So there is one question from uh, Nilanshu Matacharya. Mm -hmm. for you. So I'm, yeah, so I'm considering the Barnardan's construction of Kavanaugh homology and there, mm -hmm. there if the sign of the differential maps are such that each phase anti-commute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then if I consider the complex with any sign rule such that each phase anti-commutes, mm -hmm. those chain complexes are isomorphic. Is that true? Only if you have some restrictions. So so how you make this anti-commuting sign rule? Because you have, if you do this just like in face maps that you make some ordering and then you keep some orderings, then you have the same result. Mm -hmm. But odd Hovanov homology, you, in, in some sense, you do something with very tricky way that they anti-commute and they produce different homology. So answer is generally no, unless you are careful. Nice. There is odd Hovanov homology. Yeah, so I think on, uh, can I have one question? Sure. Okay, so on, I think on your slide number 28 or 29, uh, you said something about... Uh, this one? Uh, the one before where you compute Kavana homology for torus knots. Or this one. You mean table or concrete result or just result yeah. by picture? Yeah. Here we have result by picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the theorem before this, I think. Oh, you mean really theorem? Yeah. Yeah. So here you said that it it agrees with the uh, uh, some homology of some algebra, right? Hochschild homology, yeah, of algebra of this algebra which was used by by uh, uh, where is this algebra written? This algebra z of x x divided by x squared, yeah. So this Hochschild homology of this algebra, it's a little different on the boundaries because this is concrete algebra and torus not has many crossings. So, so up to given, up to almost till the end is exactly Hochschild homology of this algebra. So do we know more about this algebra? I mean, uh, some other description, algebraic description? Of Hovanov homology? Of this uh, algebra generated by this? Oh, this, yes. I mean, there's well-developed theory of Hochschild homology and then cyclic homologies. So it was started by, by Lode, I think. Hochschild in 1945 and cyclic homology, I think, in late 60s by, by Lode. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Anyway, so a lot of us know about Hochschild homology. This was, I was very happy that you relate Hovanov homology was then new with Hochschild homology. This is very well known. And there are books about Hochschild homology and you can just use the result from Hochschild homology and apply to Hovanov except that you apply on the in very specific cases. Mm -hmm. However, you know that for Homfle polynomial, for this generalization of, of John's polynomial, and for hovanov ruzhansky homology, the definition of, uh, and proof more even, of existence of hovanov ruzhansky homology is much more difficult. So Hovanov, using this relation with Hochschild homology, found much nicer approach, simpler approach, maybe not nicer, but simpler approach, then matrix factorization. Old method was matrix factorization. He found a rather straightforward approach using Hovanov homology or using uh, Hochschild homology for hovanov ruzhansky homology. And this is good to know. Thank you. It is the third paper of hovanov ruzhansky on hovanov ruzhansky homology. Any more questions from the audience? 
So I see no more questions. So let us thank Professor Pitsky for the wonderful talk. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.